Today, we're going back to basics. On this channel, we tend to get a little in the weeds when it comes to curating guitar tones, mixing and audio concepts, and using the Helix and other gear to get the sounds that we're looking for. But we often forget how the hell it is we even got here to begin with, and more importantly, how do we get started? So I've had a lot of viewers and struggling basement engineers reach out and ask me about my setup. So in this video, we're going to go over my recording setup, and I think you'll see that it isn't that complicated at all. All right, so first off, I use the Line 6 Helix for my guitar tones. So we'll be going through that workflow. If you're using a different audio processor, the workflow is gonna be pretty similar. So here's the thing. If you have a Helix rack like I do, the Helix Floor, the Helix LT, or the HX Stomp, you can use that as your audio interface and bypass half of this video. I choose to use an audio interface, a separate audio interface, and we'll go over that in a minute, because I like to use microphones to record vocals and acoustic instruments. So I have my Helix rack going into my audio interface. So here's the basic workflow. Guitar into a guitar cable. The guitar cable into the Line 6 Helix. The Line 6 Helix has two XLR outs, a left and a right. Those are going into my audio interface. So in this workflow, a couple things you want to consider is the level in which you're going to your audio interface. My setup, I have my main volume knob all the way up, and inside of my patch, inside of my Helix Tone, my amp channel volume is all the way at 10. Sometimes that varies depending on what's going on the, in the tone, but I always keep my main volume knob all the way up. So let's look at the back of the Helix, and I'll explain what I was talking about. Now, if we look at the back panel of the Helix, we can see that there are numerous inputs and outputs. The three we're going to be concerned with are the left and right XLRs and the USB output. The USB output is used to communicate with your computer so that you can use the Line 6 software to build your tones and edit your tones. And like I mentioned before, you can use your Helix Rack, your Helix Floor, your Helix LT, and your HX Stomp as your audio interface. And this USB connection is how the signal would be transferred to your computer. So with this setup, these are the only three connections that I need to worry about. So let's go take a look at the audio interface. So this is the back of my audio interface. It is a Thunderbolt audio interface, and it is a Universal Apollo Twin Duo. Now, that doesn't matter. You can get a quality audio interface for about 100 bucks, and it'll do just about the same thing this is doing. So if you remember a few seconds ago when we were talking about the Helix, the left and the right XLR outs. Those are going into the two main left and right XLR ins into the audio interface. These two connections next to it are going to my studio monitors. This is a very, very simple setup and it can be duplicated for much cheaper than this audio interface is. Now, like I said, 99 bucks can get you a quality audio interface that will pretty much do exactly what this is doing. So replace this with a Presonus audio box or a Focusrite 2i2 and you'll get just about the same results. The nice thing about the Apollo stuff is it has built-in DSP. So if you're using Universal Audio plugins, it will run those plugins off of here. That then allows you to take some of the strain off your CPU and run Universal Audio plugins right off of here. I don't know very many of those plugins because they're expensive. So like I said, you can get away with a much cheaper option and get the same results. So everything's plugged in, everything's connected, and we're just about ready to record. We just have to make sure that our levels are at a suitable level. Now, most audio interfaces will come with some sort of software that will allow you to do this. This is the software that comes with mine. So right now my levels are a little hot. I like to try and keep my input, if we look right here, I like to try to keep my levels at about negative 12. It's just how I like to do things. So I'm going to bring this down, the input gain. Now you'll see on my setup, because I have the volume knob all the way up, and I, the reason why I do that is just because then I know it's at the same spot. 
I have to have the pad on, which is, you know, brings it down a certain dB. So it's hovering around 12, negative 12 dB. Now you guys aren't hearing anything because I don't have it coming through the monitors. I didn't want to deal with all that. So I'm at a good level. Now, typically I'll save these settings so that every time I'm ready to record, I load this template up and I know the levels are matched. I know the levels are at the right spot. I know as long as the volume knob on my Helix is all the way up, everything will be good and I'm consistent. So now we can go into my recording software of choice, which is PreSonus Studio One. I've been using it for years. I love it. It's my favorite. DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. Sorry, like I said, we're going back to basics here. Before that, I used Reaper. Don't sleep on Reaper. I think it's $60 for a license, and it offers some of the same features that all of the high-priced DAWs, just maybe not as clean of a UI. It's fantastic. So we have everything connected. I know my levels are at a suitable level for me. What is a better way to say that? I know my input gain is at a suitable level. How about that? I have Studio One open, so I have a fresh session open in Studio One. But first, we're gonna go to the settings, the preferences, and look at that. Good thing we checked because inside of Studio One, the Universal Audio was not selected. So we're gonna change this to Universal Audio as our interface. Sample size, I can get away with having it really low when I'm recording. So I'll do 32, 48, all these numbers we can get into in another video. We're just kind of get, getting everything going at this point. So now we have everything set up. I'll add two mono tracks because I'm just recording the left channel, just recording in mono. I will pan them left, pan this right. We arm to record, we'll see we have level. Let's record a little bit. Super interesting riff right there. I know, right? That riff. I don't know if that seems simple, but it is simple. Trust me. It doesn't take a lot of gear, guys, to get going. You don't even need something like the Helix. There's stuff like bias effects where you can just go in to your audio interface and use your computer as your guitar tone. It's amazing. Some of the neural DSP stuff is freaking killer. It's super good. Just don't let this stuff get in the way of you being creative. I hope this helps some of those guys that were looking for like some sort of explanation as to my setup. And I hope you see that it is not that complicated. With a few pieces of gear, you can do the same thing. And having something like the Helix that can handle all of your guitar tones, I mean, you're, the possibilities are endless. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all the support. Thanks to the new subscribers. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. I try not to say that, but I, I'm told that I need to create some more calls to action. So I'm calling to you to act upon my asking Subscribe, thumbs up, leave comments below, give me some more suggestions for videos. Also, July 12th, I have a solo EP coming out. It's called Ample Chattels. Look up the definition. Pretty cool. Um, thanks a lot to Scott the Bun for doing the album art. One of the nicest dudes I know, and I see it as an honor to kind of be friends with him now. So thanks to him. Thanks to everyone who's shown support. You can head over to my webpage, nickhillmakesmusic.com. It's on Bandcamp for pre-order right now. It's on the webpage for pre-order. It will be on all streaming services July 12th. Look for it. Appreciate everyone's support. 
The channel keeps growing. You guys are great. Super positive vibes all around. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.